This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome this morning on this beautiful sunny Sunday morning. If there's anybody listening in the parking lot, can we get a honk? Oh, I heard some honks this morning. Well, welcome to all of you listening out in the parking lot and welcome to everyone who is watching at home. A few announcements before we begin our service this morning. Uh, thank you all for continuing to wear your safety masks as the uh, COVID variants continue to rise in so many places and there is hand sanitizer around the building and as you can see, we're socially distancing. So thank you again and someday this will be over. So don't give up hope about that. Events and committees meeting this week include the Crafty Ladies, Rescue Mission Cooking at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, Bell and Senior Choirs, and our ongoing rummage sale setup. So if you can help with that, please come on over and do so. Lenora Merrithew sold uh, Presbyterian Women Quilt tickets before worship, and you can see her in the front lobby after worship today for, to get some tickets as well. Uh, a group will be making meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and a veggie for the Rome Rescue Mission on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And if you could help, it would be greatly appreciated. So please come on over if you can. Uh, as many of you know, I will be speaking at the naturalization ceremony on Thursday. And due to the rise in COVID cases, uh, there will be no additional guests that can go and hear me speak. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, actually, all of the new citizens will only be able to bring one guest apiece. So um, again, that's just to keep people safe. So uh, sorry about that. Next week at three o'clock in the afternoon, there will be a blessing of animals. It's a short service and it'll be outside on the front lawn. So any of you here and watching at home or in the parking lot, uh, bring your animals in cages, please, or on a leash. We don't want to riot out here with all sorts of animals, but uh, there'll be a short service on the front lawn and an individual blessing of the animals. So I, I hope as many of you as can come will do so and tell your friends and neighbors as well. Should be a fun time. There are additional announcements included in the bulletin and the Friday email. And now I would like to introduce Bill Nee, who will speak on the peace and global witness offering that will be starting next week. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, where there is no justice, there is no peace. This year, Presbyterian Church USA invites us to share God's peace through the Peace and Global Witness Offering. We'll receive your contributions for this effort throughout the month of October, and you'll find envelopes in the pews beginning next Sunday. A gift of the Peace and Global Witness Offering enables the church to promote the peace of Christ by addressing systems of conflict and injustice across the world. Individual congregations are encouraged to utilize up to 25% of this offering to connect with the global witness of Christ's peace. Our 25% donation this season will be offered to the Westernville Presbyterian Church. Prayerfully, it will help to repair damages caused by the tornado which ravaged their church earlier this summer. PC USA Mid Councils retain 25% for ministries of peace and reconciliation. The remaining 50% is used by the Presbyterian Mission Agency to advocate for peace and justice in cultures of violence, including our own, through collaborative projects of education and Christian witness. Your contribution to this effort is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance and peace to you all. Thank you, Bill, and again, that will be beginning next Sunday, so uh, please give generously as you are able. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude this morning.
Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Come into this sacred space to worship God, whose teaching is perfect, whose directions are sure. Come into this holy place to worship God, whose standards are right, whose commandment is clear, whose judgments are true. Come with holy awe to be given life and made wise, to have your heart stirred and your eyes opened wide. Come, let us worship God. Let the words of our mouths and the whisperings of our hearts be according to your will, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Our gathering hymn this morning is where across the crowded ways of life we will sing verses 1 through 3 of hymn 408. Almighty God calls prophets and healers in every age, pours out the Holy Spirit in abundance. Yet we so often want to be in control and decide who deserves this grace. Let us confess our sin before God. Forgive us, Holy God, if our actions or lack of action have contributed to whether people feel welcomed into or excluded from our fellowship. Forgive us, holy God, if our actions or lack of action have contributed to whether others are flavored with your love or sent away with empty hearts. Forgive us, holy God, if our actions or lack of action have contributed to whether your spirit is embraced in everyone or a stumbling block constructed. Open our hearts, take control of our lives, help us to live from a spirit of generosity and your divine love. We now take a few moments of silence for private individual confession. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes us righteous. Let us receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all our sins. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Set free by God's grace, let us share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Almighty God, in you are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes today that we may see the wonders of your word. Give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Amen. In today's Old Testament reading, cravings take hold of the people. The question is whether these cravings are legitimate needs or selfish cravings for control. God provides manna in the wilderness, yet the people crave meat. What is truly needful? God bestows the spirit on 70 elders, yet two men not designated as leaders prophesy in the power of God's spirit. Moses' response of inclusivity, gratitude, and welcoming surprised them. Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, 10 through 16, and 24 through 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents, then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way that you are going to treat me, put me to death at once if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and the officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. 
They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man rose, ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord.
In today's Gospel reading, someone who isn't part of Jesus' own circle is casting out demons in Jesus' name, and the disciples want him stopped. They appeal to Jesus, as Joshua did to Moses, about the elders who prophesied without official authorization. Like Moses, Jesus refuses to see this as a threat. Jesus welcomes good being done in his name, even when it is not under his control. The circle formed around Jesus' word must be able to value good being done in ways we wouldn't do it by people we least expect. Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of the Lord. I invite any children to come forward for a children's message. Children of any age, come on up. have a sit right over here. So today in the Bible story we heard, Jesus is talking about salt and he says we are like salt. Do you know what salt looks like? Yeah, let's see. I got some salt in here. This is salt. Huh? Do you like salt? Let me pour out your hand a little bit. See a little bit? Looks like a little white like that, right? And we put it on food, and what does it do? Yeah, it gives it flavor. You can put that, dump it right back in here. And I got some other salt here, too. This is pink salt. Pretty cool, huh? And does the same thing. It makes things taste really good. And you know what this is? It looks like a rock, doesn't it? You want to touch it? Yeah. This is salt. Just like this salt, see it says Himalayan pink salt. It came from a rock and they crushed it and they made it really small like this. And guess what I have here? This is even a bigger rock. Look at this. Wow, you wanna to touch that one too? Guess what this is? This is salt too. 
Crazy, huh? And they take this salt and they crush it down and it turns into this pink salt right here. So salt actually, even though it's small, it comes from big rocks that we crush down. So when Jesus says that we are like salt, he wants us to do what? He wants to flavor life, right? With wonderful, good things. So we need to be good and kind and caring towards people. And we need to kind of pour that all over people like salt. Pretty cool, huh? And I know you know how to be good. So I'm going to give each one of you a sticker that says, Praise the Lord. And every time you go around doing good, kind things to people, you are praising God. There you go, a sticker for you. And I have one for you, too. All right, let's say a prayer together, okay? All right. Dear God, we thank you for all the good things that you pour into us. Help us to pour that goodness out to other, just like salt. Amen. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our faith as Christians is not an individual endeavor, but one that's done in community. That's why we all gather this morning to praise and worship God. We come together to hear God's word for this journey of faith that we are on together as the body of Christ. We start out our journey of faith as individuals, but through our baptism, we are united with the entire Christian community around the world. Yet we don't always remember that. It's easy to fall into the temptation of believing it's only about us individually or as an individual congregation or even a select group. If left unchecked, God's mission is quickly replaced by the congregation's mission or an individual's mission or goal. And further, it can lead to focusing on not who God calls us to be and do, but on what we think others should be doing. It can lead to passing judgments and gossip. It starts when we're young. Children might say things like, Mom, Dad, Ben's doing something I don't think he should be doing. Adults say things like, Teresa, did you hear the story about that new couple in town? Or, you know, he or she is paranoid or has problems, don't you? Whether you're a child or an adult, gossip can get a real hold on you. And it isn't just saying something bad about someone. It's talking about something that's not our information to share. It's focusing on what we think someone else is doing wrong instead of focusing on what God calls us to do. And the more we participate in it, the worse it gets. It forms cliques and alienates people. It builds walls to keep some people in and some people out. And the problem with gossip is that once it starts, it's pretty hard to stop it. It becomes a habit and it flows freely, just like salt. And like salt in a wound, it can be pretty painful. When we focus so much on what others are or aren't doing, it takes our focus off God and what God is doing. It throws us off balance and we forget who we are and who others are in the sight of God. 
It's not something that happens just today, but since humans first started interacting with one another. Our scripture readings from both the Old and New Testaments give us two such accounts. In the reading from the book of Numbers, we hear about Eldad and Medad, two men in the camp who prophesied through the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they were not part of the group set aside to do that. So right away, Joshua told Moses to stop them. But instead, Moses replied, Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. God called Moses to care for the people of Israel. Yet after a while, it was too much for Moses to do all on his own. So when Moses prayed, God heard him. And 70 elders were filled with God's Holy Spirit for a particular situation. Yet Eldad and Medad were still prophesying God's word to the people after that. Instead of being thankful, Moses called them out for being jealous. Moses wasn't the only one. When John told Jesus that he and the other disciples saw someone casting out demons in Jesus' name, they tried to stop that person. But Jesus also replied not to stop him. Jesus then went even further than Moses in calling them out. He said not to be a stumbling block to those on the way, what followers at that time were called. He even exaggerated his point to saying, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. Or if your eye causes you to stumble, cut it out. Harsh words for sure. No one could ever accuse Jesus of being subtle, but he had no time to waste. He had to get them to cut it out cut that kind of thinking out of their minds and out of their hearts. He didn't want them to lose sight of the mission, God's mission, not theirs. Instead of a stumbling block, Jesus wanted them and us to be a source of healing, a healing block of salt, to be precise. Salt is pretty significant And it was pretty significant in the ancient Mediterranean society where Jesus lived. It was a precious commodity. Living so close to the Dead Sea put them in touch with a great supply of it. The Dead Sea has a salinity of 33.7%, which is also 10 times saltier than ordinary seawater. Salt was used to flavor food and preserve it. It was used for medicinal purposes, and it was used as salary because Roman soldiers were often paid in salt rations. It was that important. And salt was used to seal covenants with God and one another. In Leviticus, it says, You shall not omit from your grain offerings the salt of the covenant with your God. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. Salt was pretty significant. And it was a purifying agent and made things clean and holy. Salt sealed covenants. It was life-giving. Today, you can buy blocks of salt to cook on to improve the flavor of food. And as you saw, you can buy salt lamps that purify the air. Salt reduces bitterness. It helps bread to rise. It's a critical ingredient in ice cream. And salt has medicinal implications as well. The Himalayan salt rocks give off positive ions in the air to improve emotional health and breathing. More and more studies are finding that a diet too low in salt is almost as worse as a diet too high in salt. Salt allows the nerves in our body to send and receive electrical impulses. It makes our brain work. 
It supports every cell in our bodies and is needed for the healthy functioning of our hearts, for strong muscles, for the absorption of critical minerals. Salt is essential for life. When Jesus said to have salt in ourselves, he wasn't saying to be salty, like the modern day slang describing a person meeting mad or angry or bitter or upset. He wasn't saying to be a salty sailor, meaning experienced in the life of the sea either. Jesus is saying that we have within us what is essential for life, and we need to respect that. We have within us what it is that seals covenants, and we need to honor that. We have within us the very gift of the Holy Spirit given to us in our baptism, and we need to share that spirit for the good of the whole people of God. Our journey of faith is not an individual one. We are called to carry the burdens of our neighbors, to really listen to each other, to believe them when they are hurting, to ease their pain if possible, and to lift them up, not tear them down. Our journey of faith is not a race individually to the top, but a collective journey to grow and love along the way. God has given us all different gifts, and by being our true authentic selves, we best show the wideness and vastness of God's mercy and love. Jesus said, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Cultivate what preserves life. Are we a stumbling block in the way of someone's journey of faith by the things we say or do? Or are we a block of healing following the way of Jesus? This is what we are asked to ponder this day. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, would that all your people were prophets, that you would put your spirit on all people. Salt us with the fire of your Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom and courage. May the love and light of Christ flow through each of us as freely as salt, as freely as your mercy and grace. And may we flavor the lives of each other we encounter with your holy peace. Amen. Thus profess our faith from a brief statement of faith from our book of confession. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives. 
teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. Please be seated. We hear in 2 Corinthians that each of us must give as we have made up our minds, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Therefore, with glad and generous hearts, let us return to God a portion of all that we have been given and present our tithes and offerings to God. are only a portion of all that you have given us. We gratefully present these gifts and entrust them to your work in this world. May our gifts share the good news of the gospel to those who are in need. May these gifts help unburden those with the heaviest of loads. Amen. Please be seated. In response to God's unfailing grace, we take time to give thanks and share our joys this morning. Birthdays this week include Talia Keovengsame, Sherry Fish, Lois Strife, Ron Yingling, Sue Hansen, Diane Burns, and Linda Little. Happy birthday to you all. Anniversaries include Bob and Julie Denton and Kevin and Mickey Taylor. Happy anniversary. We are grateful for a successful health and wellness fair at St. Peter's and a successful Relay for Life at Lake Delta last weekend. Our own Relay for Life team raised over $15,000 for the American Cancer Society, and I believe the overall total for Rome so far is over 75,000, and we still uh, have not received all of those uh, donations yet. So again, a wonderful Relay for Life. Brittany Contaldo, uh, 
uh, recently let us know that at her recent MRI, things are improving, yay. So no more MRI for her for a year, and if it looks good, they will spread testing out even more. And she thanks everyone for all of your prayers. So keep those prayers coming, they certainly work. Are there any other joys or shouts of thanksgiving that someone would like to share with us this morning? I know you must have some out there. Yes. Wonderful. There are so many people who are experiencing loss from these fires, and we do give thanks that they are okay and that their house is all right. Thank you. Anyone else this morning? Yes. Thank you for sharing that joy with us this morning. Yes. Go ahead. Yep. Wonderful. So thank God for glasses. I know I wear them myself and it's amazing how wonderful they are. Think about all those years ago before people had glasses. I wonder what they did. So we give thanks to God for these wonderful inventions. Anyone else this morning? All right, well, I know there are many more things that you have to give thanks to God for, little and big things, no matter what they are. There are so many joys that we have in our life. So continue to think about those during the coming week. And now let us turn our minds and hearts as we lift our prayers to God with each petition ending with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we rejoice today in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace and the new life you give us in Jesus Christ. In this moment of prayer, we pause to give thanks for the love of our families, the support of friends, this community of faith, strength and abilities to serve your purpose and opportunities to give as we have received. We give you thanks for the natural wonders of your creation. Empower us to care for this earth and aid in the healing of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Jesus Christ. In this moment of prayer, we pause to remember those who are overwhelmed by the burden of leadership, especially the Coordinating Council of the Presbytery of Utica, those who are exhausted from navigating uncertainty and change, those who are ill and their caregivers. We pray especially for Brian Burke's friend Proteus, who is battling cancer, Sally Adams, Sandy Braun, Candy Warner, Brittany Cataldo, Mark Vetter, Dorothy Hausman, Jan Bernilson, Dr. Jessica Hurwitz, neighbor to the Hansons, Trevor, great nephew of Mary Conover, Barb Stiegel, Chris Hayden, Al Martin, Bruce Warcup's daughter, Nicole. We pray for Laura, Lenora Matthews, cousin Gail and baby Briley, for Allie, Nathan Spencer, for David Constabile, Minnie Clark, Kirk and Linda Hinman and family, Dick and Essie Simons, Dory Clark, and all our shut-ins and those who are recuperating at home. 
We pray for all those serving in the military and for their brave service. And we pray for all those, those that we now name out loud or silently in our hearts. We pray for those who, grie who are grieving in any way, especially the family of Mehdi Tfei and Jackie Ni nee and family. Give them comfort and courage to move forward. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, you call us to be people who salt the world with your grace. Empower us individually and as a community of faith to flavor the world with your righteousness and peace. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all people and lead us to work with others, even those we least expect, in spreading your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you call us to journeys where we cannot see the destination, by paths untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Amen. We now take a few moments of silence to remember all those who have died, are ill, or are affected in any way from COVID-19. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing sending hymn this morning is Where the Cross, the Crowded Ways of Life, number 408, verses 4 through 6. of worship, strengthened by the Spirit, renewed by God's grace, and empowered to live always from a place of generosity, peace, and love. 
May we live in such a way that others will proclaim with us that God is good. Oh. Amen. Thank you.